Hi there and welcome back to English Lessons with Inlingua Vancouver. I'm Tash and today we're going to be looking at part two of the comma series. So if you haven't seen part one, close this video, go and watch part one first, otherwise you may be a little confused. So previously we talked about how to use commas in normal sentences, the basic use. But now we're going to look in more detail at some of the other uses that we use commas for in English. So, down on the side of my board here in red, I have some categories and then all of the black writing is example sentences. I know it looks like a lot of information, but really it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten fairly easy things to help you remember and then some practice. So don't panic. Let's start by looking at emphasizing adverbs. So what is an adverb? It's a word that describes how something happens. So, my first sentence here, Tori ran fast and got home before her mother. Okay, first of all, let's find the verb in this sentence, the action word, ran. Okay. And then the adverb, I like to point this out, adds information to the verb. So that adverb here is fast. And this sentence is perfectly fine grammatically. Tori ran fast and got home before her mother. No problem. But if we want to emphasize that adverb, make it bigger, we can use commas to do that. We need two of them and they have to go on either side of the adverb. So now we have these commas showing us where to take a little breath. Tori ran fast and got home before her mother. And that addition, those little spaces, makes it clear that there is focus on the word fast in this sentence. So, just underneath, I have another sentence for you. He fell off his bicycle hard after he turned the corner. So, we're gonna add some emphasis using commas. First job, find the adverb. Did you find it? Yeah. Hard. Okay, this one is separate from the verb but it is still the word that describes how the verb happened. He fell off his bicycle after he turned the corner. Doesn't hold as much information. He fell off his bicycle hard after he turned the corner. Adds interest, makes the sentence more exciting. And if we put in our commas for emphasis, then it makes the sentence even better. So where would we put these two commas to emphasize the adverb? We found the adverb. Comma either side, easy, no problem. He fell off his bicycle hard after he turned the corner. So those little intakes of breath give information about how to say this sentence and they make the sentence more dramatic. So we use the comma to emphasize adverbs. You have to remember you need two to emphasize an adverb, one on each side, okay? Next up, we have adjectives after nouns. My tennis racket, freshly strung and shiny new, will surely bring me luck. So, we're looking for our noun and our adjectives within this sentence. So, the noun, the thing that we are talking about, the name, my tennis racket. Okay. This is the first piece of information in the sentence. The noun is first. So, we need a comma right after it. If we have the noun up front before the description, have to have a comma. Adjectives after nouns. My tennis racket, freshly strung and shiny new, will surely bring me luck. And we need the other comma to close in the part of the sentence that is the description, okay? Very similar to parenthesis in this way. When we're using a comma like this to separate part of a sentence out, we almost can take this information away if we want to. My tennis racket will surely bring me luck. This is still a complete sentence. We have the subject, the verb, and the object. But we want to make it more interesting. We want to dump some adjectives in there, some description, and we need commas either side of those adjectives because we are leading with our noun. Let's have a look at my next sentence. My language arts teacher, so kind and lovely, will give me an A. So, where's the noun? The noun in this case is a person my language arts teacher, okay? The teacher is the noun. 
And then we have some adjectives. So kind and lovely. I'm describing myself. So kind and lovely will give me an A. So where do the commas go? Look at the first example sentence and try and add in the commas to this sentence for me. Did you get it? My language arts teacher, so kind and lovely, will give me an A. So we have the noun and we have adjectives after the noun and we need the commas to show that that is separate from the rest of the sentence. Okay? What's next on my board? Well, on my list. We use commas a lot in lists, okay? This one's pretty easy and you will have come across it in the past. It's one of the most common uses for commas. Okay. In a list where we have many items, many nouns together, okay, then we want to use commas to separate them. Otherwise, my sentence is difficult to say. Please buy eggs, milk, apples, cheese, and bread at the store. Please buy eggs, milk, apples, cheese, and bread at the store. It's very difficult. We fall over these words. So, we just whack some commas in. How about here? Please buy eggs, milk, apples, cheese, and bread at the store. Do we need a comma here? Remember what we talked about in the first video? Is bread at the store a full sentence? No, it is not. So we do not need a comma between the conjunction and the last item on the list. So no comma here. We just need one, two, three commas in this sentence. Have a go at the next sentence. We studied maths, history, and grammar. How many commas do you think we need? Ah, just one. Because and grammar, not a complete sentence. So we don't need a comma here. We just have to separate our two list items. Okay. Next up, we have cities and states. Really, countries. Okay. Any location words, towns, cities. When we are giving a list of locations, we always use commas to separate between those items. So, I was born in Wales, UK. So, a bit confusing, okay, as I have country. Wales is a country, and the United Kingdom is a kingdom, which is a group of countries together, right? So, this is the smaller part. Wales fits inside the UK. I'm gonna draw a really beautiful drawing here. This is Wales on the side there. Here's Scotland, here's England, here's Wales, okay, the United Kingdom. Wales is smaller than the United Kingdom, so it goes in front. Okay. In English, we always start with the smallest thing for locations. So Wales, comma, UK. My beautiful art. Okay. This leads in nicely to our next section, addresses. Okay. In addresses, we often use cities and states, countries, towns. We need all of that information in an address, and it follows the same rule. Start with the smallest, okay? And use a comma to separate each different part of the address. So, she lives at 45 Mitchell Drive, Vancouver, BC. How many commas do you think we need? So, the first part of the address is here, 45 Mitchell Street. 45 is not an address, it's a number, and we need the street to make sense of that number. Okay, there's no information here that helps us without the street name. So this is all one piece. Okay. Then Vancouver is our city, and BC, or British Columbia, is our province. We also need commas in numbers that are greater than 99. Okay. So numbers up to 99, we don't need any commas. But as soon as you hit 1,000, okay, we're going to need commas. Where do the commas go? They go between 999 and the rest of the number. So, there were 1,634 ecstatic students on the last day of school. Our number, 1,634, where does the comma go? Start at the right and look. Four. Is that bigger than 99? How about 34? Is it bigger than 99? No. 634? Nope. 1,634 is bigger than 99. Okay, 1,000 is bigger than 99. 999? My bad. 999. 
So we need the comma there to separate the thousands from the hundreds. Okay? And then if our number gets even bigger, like this, 111,634, really big school. We don't need another comma because 1,111 is not bigger than 99. But if we have, go up to a million, we need another comma because this section becomes bigger than 999. We also use commas in direct quotations, but not with indirect quotations. So how can we tell the difference? Look at my sentence. Katie said, I want to gallop off into the sunset. Katie said, I want to gallop off into the sunset. I have two sentences, okay? What is the difference between these two sentences? Can you see? Here we have quotation marks, right? That means this is a direct quotation. We have taken the information and we are telling you exactly what Katie said and we are putting it in quotation marks, okay? To show you exactly what she said. This is a direct quotation and it needs a comma. Katie said, I want to gallop off into the sunset. We have to have the comma before the direct quotation. But here, Katie said, I want to gallop off into the sunset. This is called an indirect quotation, where I am repeating what Katie said, but not in quote marks. I'm just telling you. The quotation is not direct, it is indirect, and so we don't use a comma in an indirect quotation. If you have quote marks, you need a comma. When you're speaking to someone, if you use their name, okay? For example, Tom, don't do that. Sam, go outside. Linda, pass me your book. When I use the name and then give some information after that, we always want to use a comma after the name. Okay? Writing, when you're speaking, you have a little pause there. Keith, do your work. Keith, do your work. Okay? We need to have that little pause to separate it out. Sometimes that can get really confusing, okay, whether or not to use a comma and when we are speaking. So let's have a look at my next sentence. I think it's a good example of when it can be confusing. I don't want any more honey. Okay. Without a comma, I am saying no thanks to some delicious, sweet honey on my toast. No, I don't want any more honey. No thanks. But what if I put a comma in here? Then honey becomes a name. It means I'm talking to someone. I don't want any more honey. With that comma, with that pause, I'm calling someone honey. I'm not talking about the spread. I am speaking to a person called honey, like an endearment, pet name. So commas are really important to make sure that your intention is clear. We use commas in dates. I was born on Thursday, December 15th, 1987 in Wales. This is true, I'm actually very old now. So how many commas do we need in this sentence? In dates. Think about addresses. When we start small, we get bigger. In English, we do the same thing with dates. So we're going to split all the different pieces of information with commas. I was born on Thursday, comma, this is the day, December 15th. Okay. This is the month and the day of the month, and they go together. Okay. They are connected, so they have to stay inside the same comma. 1987 in Wales. So, do I need a comma here, after the year? I don't need a comma here, because we are connecting to the place. Right? I was born on Thursday, December 15th, 1987, in Wales. Okay? I'm giving you day, day of the month, year, and location. And at the end here, with my preposition, we don't need a comma. It's not necessary. How about if we just use the month there? I was born in December 1987. Comma or no comma? We do need a comma, we just need one comma, okay? We're going from the month to the year, from smaller to larger, so we're gonna put a comma in to separate those two pieces of information. I was born in December, 1987. Okay. Now we're right at the bottom of my list of comma information, and we're gonna look at some adjectives. So adjectives are words that describe something. For example, I am short and blonde two adjectives that describe me. Okay. Let's have a look at some of these sentences here. 
It was a cold, dreary night. Where's my noun? What, what am I talking about? What is the noun in this sentence? The thing. Here's my noun. Okay. And adjectives describe nouns. Okay. They're adding information, letting us know about the noun. Okay. The night. What kind of night? Well, it was a cold, dreary night. And now we have two adjectives. We have cold and dreary describing this night. We need to separate them with a comma. Okay. Two adjectives. Next sentence. It was a cold September night. Hmm. Here again we have cold. We have September, which is acting as an adjective. It's describing night. Do we need a comma, do you think? It was a cold September night. Yeah, let's have one here. It was a cold September night. Is that right? Good trick when you're thinking about adjectives is can you put the word and in to replace the comma. So here, for example, if I said to you, it was a cold and dreary night, is that okay? Yeah, that's totally fine. It was a cold and dreary night. We can use a comma or we can use the word and. How about this sentence though? It was a cold and September night. Does that sound right to you? No, that's not correct. We would never use the word and as a conjunction here, okay? In this case, September night becomes the noun, right? So September is attached to night, which means we're only using one adjective and we don't need a comma to separate them because we cannot use the word and here, so we don't use a comma. This is a tricky one. Make sure you watch out for those compound nouns. How about my next sentence? You see that? I bought some stylish, comfortable tennis shoes. How many adjectives? Stylish? Comfortable, tennis. Okay, they're describing the kind of shoes. Where do we put our commas in this sentence, do you think? I bought some stylish, comfortable tennis shoes. Let's practice with the word and to see if we can work it out. I bought some stylish and comfortable sh tennis shoes. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Let's put a comma in there. I bought some stylish and comfortable and tennis shoes. Does that make sense to you? And tennis shoes? Doesn't quite work. And that's again a case of this becoming a single entity. So we don't separate it out with another comma. Because we cannot use the word and here. We wouldn't say comfortable and tennis shoes. Because in this scenario, the type of shoe is a tennis shoe. It's acting as a noun. I wore some blue tennis shoes. Do you think we need a comma for this? Do you know why? Okay. A good trick, another way to practice, as well as using the word and to decide if you need a comma, is to see if you can change the order of the adjectives. Is it possible to rearrange what you are saying? I wore some tennis blue shoes. Ooh, that sounds really bad. It sounds bad because tennis shoes, same as in the sentence above, is acting as a single entity. Okay. I wore blue tennis shoes. We don't need a comma. In this sentence, we only have one adjective acting as an adjective. So we don't have to put a comma. We say this all in one breath. I wore blue tennis shoes with no pause. Okay, so I hope that this enormous list of ways we use commas has helped you a little bit and that it's not too overwhelming. Why don't you practice some sentences and look, try and use commas in a couple of different ways within one sentence and leave them in the comments for me. And I'll see you next time for commas part three. Thanks for watching.